Hello everybody, my name is Roy and I am the co-founder and CEO of Javelin Networks. I served in the Israeli Air Force for seven years and was part of some of the biggest projects we had back in my day. After I left the army, I worked as a consultant for the Vatican and other military organizations around the world. Attackers don't rely on zero days exploits or unique attacks that take advantage of previously unknown software holes to get into systems. Why? That's because they don't have to. I know that you probably have heard tons of webinars about security and even webinars which glorifying attackers and their methods. A lot of vendors today are trying to make us believe that attackers have superpowers or they, they are so sophisticated. This is apparently serves one goal, making the vendors look smart without providing real explanations. Today I'm going to do something different. We will plan an APT campaign and explore all moves a attacker can make in under 45 minutes. We are going to skip over the infiltration part and assume that we are already have a foothold on one of the victim's machines. We will go over all attacker's moves he can make uh, from that point on to, the, on to move further into the organization. See, APT is an operation and we, the attackers, need to steal as much as data that we can or even simpler, encrypt it from within the corporation, remaining stealthy for as long as we can and keep in mind the most important thing, the budget. It's a business and at the end of the day, it's all about ROI. Therefore, in addition to being stealthy and quiet for a long time, we also need to be efficient. And the key is to create a campaign that will allow us to reuse the APT repeatedly, internally or additionally to other victims. So it will work like this. I'll show you a map and we will go over all steps and think what's worth the risk, the effort, the time, and our investment. There are only two types of footholds an attacker can use. The first type being a foothold with corporate domain access, and the second type being without corporate domain access. That's it. That's the only thing you need to remember today. You need to realize that with each type of foothold, Specific attack methodologies must be carefully planned and different amounts of effort and budget are required. Before we can proceed down each path here, let me remind ourselves real quick why are we doing it. I call it the four obvious reasons. We can encrypt targets from within the corporation, potentially on, and, and then ask for a big ransom. Also, not before we make sure we disable the endpoint protection on each machine. We can also steal data, cause damage to the environment, or control their cloud infrastructure or any other uh, SaaS applications from within the organization. Those are the four obvious reasons. The other not so obvious reason is to create a backdoor, mainly in the way of corporate uh, domain persistence. So if something goes wrong, we will still be able to go back to the environment and continue the attack. So imagine we get a foothold on a non-domain machine. It could be a server for or, or a PC. Any operational system makes no difference. We can now ask ourselves, are we going to move forward into the corporation? So of course, absolutely. We have two options here, steal credentials or use other methodologies. Let's start with uh, steal credentials first. Here we have two options, locally stored credentials. This is one really straightforward. Any creds we can find on the machine, we are controlling and hoping we can actually reuse them over and over inside to access uh, more internal resources. Now guys, we should take into consideration that if the victim is using 
a different password on each machine, he blocked us from moving forward down that path. Now, our other option here is stealing credentials that are stored in a remote location inside the environment. The idea here is to find a way to force the credentials to come to us. This is why we call it remotely stored credentials. As an example, we can uh, develop a, a keylogger model, uh, of course, which increase our investment and, and our risk, or we can use uh, many of the middle manipulations. Now, the lucky wheel here is to emphasize the fact that it is at the hands of the, we call it the APT God. From this point, we don't, we, we don't really know what, we go, what, what we'll get. Uh, and we just hope for the best. Now, we need to figure out which targets we want to move forward to. And that is the reconnaissance part. So we need to scan the environment. So let's, let's go over our options here. So domain scan, it's a great method for us to get a full visibility at no risk, fast, but unfortunately, this is only available when the machine has access to the corporate domain. Scan all private IP addresses, spaces, to get full target visibility. It's a great idea, but consider there are almost 18 million IEPs out there and, and literally, it will take a lot of time and, and, and of course, will jeopardize our campaign. We will reach each one of the PCs and server, let's say, in a one-minute interval. And then that actually will take a lot of time. By the way, if we lower the range, we are actually increasing the risk. So what we have left is actually the old famous local scan, limited to the villain that we are in. There is very limited visibility with these options. So we get the creds. We know which target we are going after. And that's it. We managed to jump one step forward. Not that bad, huh, for a start. Starting over, but from the top, let's take a different color here and go with uh, the other. Let's go straight to a limited network scan restricted to the villain as mentioned but this time we want we, we don't have any credentials so we need to be prepared for two scenarios if we land on an endpoint villain we are expecting to see uh, another villain and other endpoints only around us and if we land on a server villain we are expecting to see other servers only so let's go first with the server villain to move forward here, we need to attack the application running on the server. Here we need to consider that our victims potentially using uh, web application firewalls internally, which will make our job harder. That could be a risky move. The second option is attacking the operational system itself, the server, the server operational system, by searching for unpatched vulnerability here and again, potentially expecting face a victim with a patch management system or just machine that is uh, fully patched. What can also be done is trying to find a zero day, something no one has ever found before. But this is actually rare and very expensive, uh, expensive actually to find. We need to put in a lot of research and effort. Uh, and keep in mind, even if we do find one, uh, we would need to go over that again on every jump. So it's a lot of effort, it's not scalable, high investment and high risk. It's not good, not good an idea. So last thing here, before you guys start losing hope, let's go back to, and assume we are in an endpoint villa. To move laterally without crash, remember, we need to search for RCEs allowing us a remote code execution. We can prey on finding some known RCEs or God forgive us, we would need to find a zero day. But again, we need it on every jump, on 
every move that we take internally and that equals more money more time more risk okay done we're done with the non-domain I promise the domain part will involve less praying and will be much faster here of course we are moving forward huh other ways uh, would lead us back again to here so let's go back and still credentials of course let's start with locally stored credentials now what's interesting with corporate domain credentials is that they are reusable yes you got one high chances we can use it repeatedly internally so we can steal the local admin for example and use it internally we may also find a high privileged account that will grant us immediate access to multiple resources inside we can also find a domain admin account stored locally now guys domain admin is a jackpot we now have access to anywhere we want inside without almost without almost zero effort now quick tip before using any uh, domain credentials that you find we may need to double check that information and verify with the active directory in order to see if it's not a trap or a honey token the other option is to steal remotely stored credentials remember this is like a walk in you know walk in the candy shop here we have a lot more options one cool method called silver ticket attack it actually allows us to get access to an internal resource using Kerberos manipulations and of course that is just one example just this is just one example now next phase is of course to understand where we want to go what targets are we going after so next next phase is to scan targets so actually again this is my favorite part but this time we're going uh, using the the same of course uh, the same old network scan now quick recap we stole corporate domain credentials remember before we move laterally using those credentials we must check few things first we must verify if target will discover in connected to the domain if it's not connected to the domain our domain credentials that we stole are useless and we immediately be denied access second we need to make sure it's worth our time and the target is not a trap again a honeypot or something we need to verify activity on the destination target beforehand so if we see no movement we are in actually in a dead end but if we see it if we do see activity we can move forward uh, but we need to keep in mind that it's a, we have limited visibility to the resource that we actually can attack now last thing let's try again but this time we will use the domain scan remember we are in a domain environment so we will use a unique scan methodology called domain scan which is sending actually queries to the centralized database that stores information about all servers all endpoints all applications all identities all employees inside better known as active directory and yes we get full visibility no special privileges is required no risk and it's actually from one place in less than one second you're probably thinking identities employees yeah we can be specific and search for employee like administrators and start what we call is the admin hunt which of course is a total win and and if we manage to hunt ourselves an admin we get full access to anywhere inside again minimum efforts minimum time another option is searching for a server 
like a terminal server or a printer server, which will contain a lot of credentials, domain credentials, in one single place, just waiting for us to grab. Or we go natural and pick any server and use the domain credentials from the previous phase, and that's it. We win again. Maximum gain, minimum moves, minimum effort, minimum risk. So now you know, guys, we don't need to break any window inside and make noise. We can use just open door and keep it open for a next visit. A corporate domain foothold is key for stealthy and efficient operation. An evasion from traditional defenses is almost guaranteed. Okay, so this is a list of the most recent APT campaigns. They get all fancy and creative with their, with their names, but in reality, they are relying on the same methodology I just showed you. They get a foothold on one machine that connected to the domain, scan the environment to learn about all resources, steal domain credentials to access resources over and over again. So the secret is out. Now you know the path of least resistance in every corporation is the domain infrastructure that is managed by Active Directory, which contains all information about the corporation and is accessible from any machine connected to the domain. No special privileges needed. Protect your Active Directory and domain environment. Thank you for watching and please, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Also make sure to get your hard copy poster of the attacker decision tree I just showed you today. It will look great in your office.